Hi, check this one out. It's a random teardown item from the bunker and it's an electric fence controller. It's the MBT200. Look at these gigantic screw terminals on here. And it's actually an Australian unit. Check it out. Manufactured by Pacton Technologies. They are still around and this is what they do. They manufacture uh, electric fence controllers. So I've contacted them to see if I can get a uh, schematic. I'll see if it uh, turns up in time by the time I finish this video. Anyway, it's a really old model that I can't find any info on at all. It's the MBT200 Type D, whatever that is. Um, input 16 volts AC or 12 volts DC. Output um, into 100 ohm load, 12 joules. So it doesn't tell you how many uh, kilovolts. Uh, it does, but it's got a kilovolt uh, display on it, um, AC and DC inputs, and a switch, and that's about it. And, well, I, d I don't know anything about electric fence controllers, so let's crack it open and see what's inside. Lots of big caps, no doubt. All right, six screws on here, and... Uh, hello? Wow, look at that tranny. Wow, that's enormous. Look at those caps. Oh, yeah, that's where all the jewels are being stored. Oh, but look at this! Made in Australia! You bloody ripper! Unbelievable! What's that? 30 mic, Plessy Ducon caps, um, 30 mic, 900 volts DC each. Wow! Pulse grade capacitor, made in Australia. Ah, oh, bloody beauty. Um, yeah, Plessy. I used to work at uh, GC Marconi. Yeah, they were Plessy. I think GC Marconi bought out Plessy and now the GC Marconi uh, Technology Park at Meadowbank is now just, there's only a few buildings left and there's a road called Faraday uh, Road left and that's it. And it's all like housing development, apartment development complexes now. It's really quite sad. Anyway, that was a, uh, they had their own ceramic hybrid manufacturing facility and everything. Anyway, um, I don't think they made, they didn't make the caps there. I'm not sure where they made those, but somewhere in Australia. Oh, check it out. That's a... Look at the size of that transformer in there. Wow. And here's all the output caps. Wow, check that out. Got a separate riser board for that. So, got a bunch of big power resistors. And, uh, yes, I can poke around. It's been turned off for ever. It's just been sitting in the bunker. Um, so I'm sure it's completely discharged. Uh, they'd be amazing caps if they weren't. So um, I would assume they, they'd be in series, I would guess, to get the, uh, to get the voltage uh, requirement. I'm not sure how many kilovolts um, this sucker's going to be, but oh, anyway, there we go. There's different models. This is the MBT200. So MBT50 and BT50 and BT80. Maybe I can get some info on the BTs. So that's actually uh, 2004 vintage down there. And if you go to the website, which I'll link in down below, they've actually got um, some amazing repair guides for these uh, things, like a PDF with all the instructions on how to troubleshoot and repair these things. Unfortunately, they don't have this particular model and they don't have a uh, schematic in the ones that I saw. But yeah, um, it really is quite nice. So they really do seem to uh, support these. And they do actually have an eBay store where they sell uh, replacement capacitors. The same 30 mic 900 volts, but not the uh, Plessy ones anymore, because I'm pretty sure you can't, they're not making these anymore in Australia, and uh, you can't buy them. But exactly the same rating uh, from uh, Hong Kong, uh, or HK capacitor, I assume it's Hong Kong capacitor. Uh, they manufacture a range of uh, these same ones, so they still sell replacement caps in these things. So anyway, yeah, these are these are fantastic jobbies. They'll be flame proof and they'll be, you know, uh, they're designed for like high pulses because electric fence controllers, I believe, although there's many different types, there's lethal, non-lethal, and there's ones that go, that go from <laughs> like giving you a warning zap to ones that then on the second zap will kill you. You know, they're designed for like, you know, prisons and uh, military installations and uh, uh, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, this is probably just an agricultural uh, model. So, you know, to stop uh, animals getting through um, electric fences on the farm. So it's probably not lethal, but you wouldn't want to touch it. Um, you know, 12 joules. Oh, geez, you'll know you're alive if you get hit with that. That's, that's for sure. 
So it looks like a pretty uh, dumb unit. There's no smarts in here. Um, I, I'd say that the uh, kilovolt meter is just like a panel meter uh, type thing because I don't see any microcontroller unless, you know, something's on the other side. Maybe we can take the board out and uh, flip it over, but I wouldn't expect anything on the other side. I think we've just got uh, primary side uh, storage and uh, switching here. Looks like we've got three big, uh, probably uh, MOSFETs in there, and that switches this... Uh, a huge big custom transformer here and uh, to the secondary. Has it got any feedback? I would say that this big resistor here, uh, oh, th that's Mark D, O2. What's in there? Ooh, what is that? It's got a cover on it. Oh, there's two leads on each side. Oh, oh, O2. It's an opto, is it, it's an opto coupler, is it? Anyway, um, these are usually uh, like pulsed uh, DC type things. I'm sure there's many different uh, standards and, and stuff like that for them. Uh, but yeah, I believe it's like a pulsed uh, DC type thing. So it doesn't give you like continuous direct uh, DC shock. It will actually pulse. That's why you need uh, pulse grade uh, capacitors input and output too, of course. But yeah, I'd say it's got some sort of uh, feedback to regulate that. And what's that resistor up there doing? Is that a bleed resistor or is that a uh, feedback jobby? Uh-huh. If you have a look down in there, it says HTFB. That would be high tension feedback. So that's either feeding back from the secondary uh, side, but given its location, it doesn't seem to be. So maybe there's like a uh, intermediate... Uh, step up there and then before it gets to the big tranny perhaps and that's what they mean well, there you go. I spoke too soon. There's your microcontroller down there. All the PIC fanboys go wild. What one is that? A PIC 16F uh, series, given the vintage of this sucker. And that's just driving uh, the LCD. There is some extra uh, surface mount chippies under there. They're just, they would just be uh, LCD drivers because the PIC wouldn't um, have direct LCD drivers and there's not enough pins anyway, so yeah. So it's probably a little op amp in there, couldn't be bothered checking. Uh, we've got some LEDs and no surprises for seeing uh, big cutouts between uh, the capacitors here, although they don't extend all the way out here. I would have extended those out a bit further than that. That's a bit... Oh, <laughs> it's a bit tight ass. Um, look, they've extended it out this side, but they haven't extended it out that side. Um, is this an afterthought? Uh, they've got a uh, mov on the uh, straight across that cap there. So yeah, maybe they, I don't know, come a guts are somehow in the design and they've added that as an afterthought because otherwise you'd put that uh, directly on the PCB. And then they've got another uh, switching tranny um, on its back on the bottom side, which is unusual. Don't know why you wouldn't have, uh, you know, laid that out on the top side. It's all a layout issue, really. But yep, all three of those uh, caps are in parallel, so yeah, no touchy. And I'll just check to see if the negative of these caps is uh, ground referenced, so yep, of course it is. Now this is interesting, uh, this, uh, that was the big power resistor we saw on the top, and sure enough, it's between the positive and the negative output like this, but it goes through that little uh, opto-sensory type thing. The component across there is just a uh, reverse biased uh, diode. Uh, that might just be a dropper resistor, that doesn't actually have to be a load, otherwise it'd be current sensing the load. So I'd say more likely it's just voltage sensing and that's just a dropper for whatever the heck part this is. Just wanted to show you a 4K close-up of these Plezzy Ducon caps because, yeah, you rarely see those and you won't see them anymore because I'm pretty sure they don't make them. Ha! Ah, I figured this out. It's obvious. It is an opto-coupler and there's nothing in the middle. Squishy, squishy. That's a lead and that's a photo tranny. <laughs> <laughs> so they're just rolling their own um, opto coupler there because presumably they couldn't uh, find one with enough uh, withstanding voltage. Fair enough. It's a cheap way to do it. So that right there is a one meg lead dropper resistor. Have you ever seen a one meg lead dropper resistor? Hands up. I'm sure there's not many of you. So if you do the calculation for that, of course, ignoring the little uh, piddly uh, diode drop compared to a thousand volts, you know, you just do rules of thumb in engineering, then that's uh, one milliamp per kilovolt. 
So a typical lead might be 20 milliamps max, uh, for example, then, you know, zero to 20 kilovolts. That makes sense. Doesn't mean it's going to go up to 20 kilovolts. I don't think it does. I think these only go up to, you know, several kilovolts, maybe five uh, tops or something like that, perhaps could go higher. But um, yeah, that makes sense. Just one milliamp per kilovolt. Easy. So you would just get a uh, proportional current in the phototransistor on the other side of that optocoupler, roughly. And for you power trendy aficionados, there you go. But the one on the uh, left there, uh, the friend of Jake the Peg, has only got two legs. In fact, both of those other parts down in there, they're diodes. They ain't trannies. So obviously we've got a first stage uh, switcher here. There's our switching tranny. There's our switching uh, transformer. And uh, that would be generating, well, these are 900 volt caps, they're all in parallel. So, you know, be generating, you know, seven, 800 volts, um, something like that. You wouldn't be pushing it right to the uh, 900, of course. And then that, um, then you'd use the, this other switching tranny over here to uh, take the energy from these caps and drive your transformer to get um, switching again uh, to a boost it to your high output voltage. I actually rather like this uh, spade lug arrangement like this. PCB mount spade lugs and they just go in like that. That's a, a neat way to do a vertical uh, riser bore. But anyway, um, there you go. We've got the positive and negative outputs and we've got a common uh, as well. And we've got two big, uh, oh, I don't know, the different values, 56R and 100R. There you go. But yep, I'm guessing all these caps are in series and yep, I am right. Yep, check it out. There we go. One there. Series, 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 series. So we got six caps in series. How many volts each? That'll tell us our maximum output. So if you don't know the maximum output voltage of a design like this, you can just calculate it. Well, these are 250 volts cap and 250 volts each. They wouldn't be running them at uh, 250 volts. So let's just say uh, 200, six times 200, 1200 volts. So 12 times 200, that'd make uh, 2400 volts with an absolute max uh, voltage rating of 3000 volts. So yeah, it's not gonna be over 3000. This is good um, because I have an old analog meter. No, none of this digital rubbish have an old analog meter that measures up to five kilovolts so if we power this thing on i'll be able to uh, measure that directly with my analog meter beauty and in case you're wondering those big power resistors here's the positive input coming from the transformer and it goes through a series resistor and then through the series caps like that so those caps are actually um, in series and then they're just half tapping uh, the capacitance uh, network here to give you your common. And some people might be wondering, well, why don't they put uh, slots in a board like this? Well, you can, of course, uh, to prevent creepage, which is um, across your board like this, if you get moisture contamination or something like that across your board, you can certainly do that. But because these are only 250 volts rated each, essentially there's only 250 volts between there and there. And that's plenty of uh, creepage clearance for uh, 250 volts uh, DC. So when you whack them all in series, oh, you could argue like there's more across there and stuff like that. So you could argue there could should be maybe a slot down there or something like that. You know, it, it's, it obviously does the job. But yeah, I think if you go get your uh, chart out and work out your uh, clearances, it's it should be enough. And then there's uh, three of those MOVs in series or six of them in series uh, across the entire positive negative output. Again, because they didn't have the individual uh, rated ones, I guess. And these two unpopulated components marked here, um, S, they would be spark gaps. So um, yeah, they just haven't populated in the spark gaps. I guess, you know, they didn't want both the MOVs and the spark gaps. So, you know, either or. So I do actually like this uh, front terminal arrangement. It really is quite good. And that vertical board with the uh, spade lugs and these go through the holes on the uh, PCB like that. That is, that's really quite a neat solution. All right, I'm going to power this thing up. I have no idea if it works. I don't, it literally came from the dumpster, so I don't know what the deal is. Um, I'm going to power it with my micro supply. And as I've said many times before, anything over 12 volts DC scares the shit out of me. So I'm not going to be anywhere near this sucker. So let me move this away a bit further. So here we go. Uh, 12 volts, one amp. I'm going to turn it on. And oh, it works. It works. There's digits. There's digits on there. Kilovolts, load factor. Let's, uh, there's a dash, dash, dash. 
Let me um, just draw in 14 milliamps. That's quiescent current, obviously. Then it dies out. Oh, all eights. So that's a, a power on test, I guess. So let's switch it on. Uh, nothing. Maybe it was already on. Um, nothing. Either way, I, you, you don't need a load on it, I don't think. And there's no energizer light on there or anything, so nah. Wah, 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 wah. Sorry. Decided to hook it up to my uh, beefier lab supply here and uh, 1.5 amp current limit, which my little micro supply can't do it. And we do get a brief output here. Watch this. Overload and then energizer okay briefly, but nah, it's only it's only rated for 1.1 amps So maybe there's like some input pulse Something like that. I might leave it there. I was briefly thinking it'd charge up slowly, but like it's 10 milliamps This is quiescent stuff. It's not it's not loading any energy. There's no jewels going in those gorgeous Aussie caps all right, well, let's try it with a load. Got this in the previous mailbag, coincidentally. I don't know it's our uh, voltage rating, and it does have exposed terms, uh, turns there because it's an adjustable uh, power resistor, but she'll be right. That's 1K. This thing's uh, rated for lower loads than that. So anyway, um, let's give it a burl. Nope, exactly the same thing as before. I don't know if you saw that uh, the Energizer LED does briefly come on, but... That's it. I mean, it's not going into overload or anything. Just quiescent current. So I've had a bit of a little quick poke around in here, but I can't see anything obvious. Now, one of the things is the uh, the switch on the side here. This is actually uh, connected into a like a single in-line header there. Uh, is that the right one? I don't know. It is labeled T2. Whatever the heck that means. So, but unfortunately, like without a manual and uh, without a schematic, and um, flying a bit blind, sure, I could, uh, you know, uh, start uh, reverse engineering this or, or having an educated uh, poke around. But um, the good thing is, is that uh, Pacton claim that they will supply the schematics. They actually tell you this on the website and on the um, in the actual uh, like troubleshooting documentation as well. So I have emailed them, but like it's Christmas and New Year's time. So they're probably like completely shut down. So rather than spend my time actually, uh, you know, doing this, I'll wait until I come back. And if you're watching this, I am actually on walkabout somewhere. Um, so I'm not in the lab. So uh, yeah, I won't be back until uh, towards late January. Um, so hopefully uh, by then they'll be uh, back and they can uh, send us a schematic and maybe, uh, maybe an operational manual for this thing. So we might get lucky. And if they don't uh, come through, through, then we can always do a reverse engineering video. So if you want to see a reverse engineer uh, of the circuit of this thing, then mention it in the comments down below and give it a thumbs up too. The more thumbs up I get, um, the more tempted I will be to do a follow-up video for this one. This was supposed to be just a teardown, so I'll call it quits there and I won't uh, attempt to repair this thing and or if there's anything wrong with it, maybe it's just a, you know, a pebcack. Um, I don't know how to use this thing. Maybe someone's fiddled around with it. I don't know. Um, and it's got not for sale written on the back of it. So I'm not sure if this is, and given that I can't find any info on it, um, maybe it's a, could even be like an unreleased or limited release product or, or something like that. But it does have, you know, proper serial number and everything up there. So yeah, not sure what the deal is. But anyway, um, Pacton do claim to supply the schematics. And this is, well, uh, 16 years old. Jeez, you know, 2004, that was yesterday. And, well, it's 2020 now, by the time you're watching this. Jeez, anyway. Um, yeah, so I <laughs> hope you like that uh, teardown of this Aussie uh, designed and manufactured Unit, absolutely brilliant. Oh, Plezzy caps. Uh, let us know in the comments down below if you've used uh, Plezzy caps and when they actually uh, stop making I presume they stopped making them. I don't think they make them anymore. <laughs> Please correct me if I'm wrong. And this custom tranny up here, is that made in Australia too? Maybe. Anyway, um, yeah, Ripper. So anyway, they do have lots of more advanced models now, but uh, yeah, if they come through with a schematic, then we can have a go. If not, or oh, a reverse engineer maybe. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time.